another way of going live during your broadcast. Oh my. Okay, come over here and look, make sure this is all right. Okay. Somebody's popped up already. Is watching, okay. Okay. <clears throat> And it should tell you. Am I here? Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Hi, y'all. Um, just want to welcome you to Gamble's Facebook Live 1030 AM uh, presentation. And um, want you to know that we are doing these at 1030 AM and 3 PM each and every day. And that's Central Standard Time. So if you're on the East Coast like me, that would be 11.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. And if you're in another time zone, well, I'm just gonna tell you all, that's probably too much math for me, so you're gonna have to figure that one out on your own. Um, my name is Karen Sievert, and I am a Gamble educator, and I'm coming to you from the very small town of Bailey, North Carolina. Um, you know, we have about 500 people here in town, and the property that we live on, I can't see my neighbors. I can't see the people on either side of me or the people that are behind or in front of me. So, you know, with this coronavirus thing, I would have to say that I've been doing social distancing for years. It turns out that going to the grocery store is a big social event in my life because I typically don't see anybody during the day. Um, I'm a wee bit nervous in case you all can't tell. Um, I love the classroom environment, and the reason I love the classroom environment is because I get to be with you all. I am such a people person, and I love being able to see the expressions on your face because it gives me feedback as to whether the message is resonating with you or whether it's not. Um, but these are different times, so what I'm doing is talking to a camera. Can you believe this? Um, and so I'm just going to have to pretend that you are sitting on the other side of me and just smiling. Can they hear me? Okay. Um, my topic for today is going to be um, whole cloth design inspiration. There are a lot of different components that go into whole cloth quilts, and I'm going to tell you that um, whole cloth quilting is one of the things that I absolutely love. And the reason is because there's nothing to distract the eye. Um, there's no beautiful piecing or beautiful applique um, to distract the eye from the quilting. The entire concept, the entire message is just being given to you, the viewer, in um, fabric and thread. And it's kind of like, for me, it's like the ultimate way to express myself because um, it's just down to the bare bones basic basics. And what I'm gonna talk about is um, where we get our design inspiration. I could talk about a lot of different things, you know, um, drawing it out, transferring it from your uh, design onto your fabric. We've got fabric batting and backing choices, thread choices, and then actually doing the quilting. But the number one question that I get asked um, about whole cloth quilts is how do I start? You know, where do I begin? And that's a hard question sometimes to answer. And the reason I think it's hard to answer and the reason that I hesitated on teaching this as a class was because it's so very, very subjective. Um, it's not like there's a magic formula that, you know, I have or anybody else has um, on how to get started with a whole cloth quilt. And what I would, what I would ask you is, what do you love? What is it that, that sings to your soul? What is it that makes you happy? What images do you see that totally resonate with you, that just almost make you catch your breath? because those things are the things that are going to inspire and motivate you. You know, in today's day and age, we pretty much, I would think that most everybody watching this uh, Facebook Live presentation has a cell phone. And if you have a cell phone, you probably have a camera capability on your cell phone. 
So one of the things that I have found that is incredibly useful to me is because I have my cell phone all the time, I'm so afraid of missing something, um, I can immediately take a picture of anything that I see that I think would translate into something that would make a good quilting design. For instance, um, carpets and wallpaper. Have y'all ever noticed that hotels have just the coolest carpets and wallpapers, um, things like that? I take pictures of stained glass. I take pictures of wrought iron. I take pictures of architectural elements. Um, I take pictures of gardens. Um, coloring books, all different kinds of things. And you can see I'm referring to my notes because I don't want to um, forget anything. And before I proceed any further, I do want to mention that this whole idea of doing a whole cloth is appropriate to you whether you're doing um, computerized stitching, such as with a Statler, whether you are totally a hand-guided quilter, whether you are a domestic quilter, or whether you're doing a combination of all of them. Um, it's, it's, you are able to, even a whole, or a hand quilter would be able to do this. Um, and I think that's really exciting because it has broad appeal to a, a number of people. Um, so asking yourself that question, what do you love, and making that part of your message. You know, the thing with the whole cloth, the way I look at them, is you know you're telling a story you're sending a message just with what you're painting with the thread on the fabric and that message is something that probably comes from deep within you so for myself you know i love well i love my family i love hummingbirds you know i'm the first one to have feeders out every spring i love gardens and flowers and i tend to be kind of victorian um, those are things that I love, but it's not, you know, something that I can necessarily just draw up and, and say that I like. So what do I do? Well, I, I take those pictures, like I said, on the camera, and then I also look for design inspiration in other places. Um, one of the things that you can do is use your computer um, or your phone um, search functions, you know, depending on what internet browser that you have, and you can search a variety of different things. For instance, a mandala is a wonderful way to come up with your uh, center design. And I will tell you that the center medallion, for me, I always start in the middle of the quilt because that's what works for me. And if something else works better for you, then you want to pursue this because this is about you getting the results that you want. Um, and so I hope my method works for you, but if it doesn't, you know, please pursue the method that does work for you. I typically start with the center design because when you look at a quilt, your eye most frequently will go to the center of the quilt. So right away, I wanna be able to grab your attention and make you feel like you're kind of getting the message of my quilt just from that center medallion. So how do you start with the center medallion? Again, a mandala is a great way to start with that because it is typically a round that has all different kinds of components such as this. And you can see that this would be an absolutely lovely design. Um, I don't know that it totally translates to quilting, um, but it would be a great starting point to take some of these um, definitive edges and, and put your quilting fills and motifs inside of that. Um, there's just nothing like a mandala to, to get started with. And, and I find that a lot of people do like to start with this. And I will typically, when I look at these, I like to look at them in black and white. And the reason I want to look at them in black and white is because the whole cloth quilt is being represented basically in your fabric and your thread choice. There's not a lot of color to distract the eye, as I had said previously. The other thing I like to do is I like to look at what's called vector images. And vector images are just um, drawings, and they can be color drawings, they can be watercolor, um, but they can also be a line drawing. The thing that I have found is that with a line drawn, if you can line draw something, you can quilt it. 
So if you can translate it into a line drawing, then you can quilt it. So as I mentioned, one of my loves is hummingbirds. So I went into my vector art um, search function on my computer and I brought up some different images of hummingbirds. Now this is not a quilt pattern, but it gives me the um, different areas that I could break down and come up with a design concept. So maybe I'll put one thing in the wings, another thing in the belly, and something different in the tail feathers. I'm not gonna rely on just one image. I'm going to go to several different images and just look at the ones that resonate with me. You know, because I like the Victorian kind of flair, I find that I'm more drawn to the images that, that kind of have that Victorian look to them. So I printed these out because these would be a great starting point uh, for me. And what I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes is how I took these designs and came up with a whole cloth quilt. The other thing that I like to look at that I told you all was wrought iron and architectural designs, different things like that. So I also went in to the vector images and printed out some different frames. And I love this because what it does, it's almost like a mirror, right? And you have this beautiful outside edge, which is easily translatable into a quilt design. And you can put whatever you want into the center of that. And then you would just continue to build your whole cloth by adding more designs all the way around it. Now I would want to make sure that I balanced all of this flow here with some straight lines in order to be able to give the eye a place to rest. I'm gonna show you a few more. Um, this one I just thought was so cute and yes, it is very Victorian. It looks like Cinderella's coach. Um, and I think this would be a great, you know, idea for a center medallion, perhaps on a wedding quilt, or you could put the, the name of the couple and the date in there. It would also make a great center medallion for a baby quilt, um, for a, a little girl, obviously, where you could put in her name, her weight, and birth date. So um, again, I'm just trying to give you some ideas of different things that you can do. I love looking at borders and frames because borders and frames is the first thing that I'm gonna put into the quilt. I'm going to do my center medallion and I want to make sure that I have some type of a border or a frame around it that is going to catch your eye and let you know that what's in the middle of that frame is the most important piece and everything that follows is just going to be different components of what's in that center design. So my message on the whole cloth quilt is going to come from what's inside the center design. This is another one that I love and yes I would have to um, I guess uh, change it up somewhat because it's a little busy right now but it could definitely be converted to a line drawing and it's just a really kind of fun uh, frame for something that goes in the middle. You know, most of the time we think that whole cloth quilts have to be absolutely symmetrical. And with that, what I mean by that is that um, you have to have something in the center and whatever's on the top has to be exactly the same on the bottom and the left and right sides have to be exactly the same. And yeah, you know, I mean, I like symmetry. That, my soul is kind of drawn to symmetry. But there's a lot of beauty in doing things that are asymmetrical. Uh, designs that are a little bit asymmetrical and unexpected um, take the expectation of perfection off the table. And they give you so much more artistic freedom. Um, you know, it just, it, it's just very liberating to do something that, that starts from the center and works its way out and that is not a symmetrical design. Some examples of some other wrought iron designs is like this little heart here. And again, I just think that's really incredibly cute. And not only is it appropriate for a whole cloth design, but don't y'all think that would make a great label on the back of a quilt? Um, there are just so many different things that you can do with this. And of course, I'm picking out things that sing to my soul, that resonate with me. You're gonna pick out things that 
that sing to your soul. Again, what is the image that takes your breath away? When you see it, you're like, oh my gosh, I just love that. Um, you know, you can look at things like tattoos. Um, there are so many different places that you can get your design inspiration. Um, in fact, one of the things, I hope that you can see this, is that there's an owl on this fabric, and he, he or she, depending on your perspective, um, could easily be, again, be converted into a line drawing. And different fills could be put into like each of the different wings and different things like that to actually personalize it. So fabric can be an inspiration. I have this owl right here, which is kind of the same thing. And I actually have one drawn up and I couldn't find it, but I've actually taken owls like this. And owls, not something I've I've really been into, but I just thought, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be cute? And I could, I could call it something like, I'll be darned, or I'll be watching you, or I'll always love you. Um, it's just, it just goes to show that you never know where you're going to get that design inspiration from. And, and when it tickles your fancy, go ahead and jot it down, you know. Um, you may not be able to draw it out right then, but later on, you may come back to it and say, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to do this. So I'm going to go through a couple more pictures real quick. Again, this is wrought iron. Um, I just love the look of this. I love the, the kind of Celtic design, but I also love the little flow um, in the two opposing corners. Um, oh boy, this one really sings to my soul. Um, these are gates that, you know, wrought iron gates that, um, you know, it just, I, I don't know. I just think that would be an incredibly amazing central design. And taking that one step further, um, we talked a little bit about architectural details. And this is the photo of kind of an architectural detail that, again, um, has a lot of detail in it that could easily be uh, converted to a line design and therefore be the center medallion of your whole cloth quilt. I only have a couple more pictures to show you. Um, this is one that I just, um, I don't know, I fell in love with it because it was like you're walking through these columns, this gate into this beautiful garden, and I just love the entire concept. I love the, the depth perspective that you get on this. And again, these are more examples of asymmetrical designs, um, not your typical whole cloth quilt designs, but places where I get my inspiration from. For those of you that are doing computerized quilting or even non-computerized quilting, understand that your quilting motifs that you can pull from the pattern cloud or stencils can also be great starting points for your whole cloth quilts. Um, another thing that can be a great inspiration for you is artwork, um, whether it's a picture in an art gallery. Oh my gosh, you know, one of the things I, that just occurred to me was like cathedral ceilings, like when you go into a church. They are so architecturally beautiful and would make an absolutely gorgeous central design. Going back to my Victorian roots, this is a picture of a tapestry that I have hanging in my dining room, and I absolutely love it. There's a lot of color in this picture, so it is very distracting to the eye, but I can see, I actually have a vision for how this could be translated into the center medallion of a whole cloth quilt. And so for me, this message would be like about Italian grace and hospitality and, you know, kind of come dine with me. Um, and I have another tapestry that I'm going to actually show you that would be um, kind of the same thing. Can you see this, Vince? Yeah, bring it down a little bit. Okay. There you go. And again, this is just one of those things that um, it was a piece of artwork that I absolutely loved. And when I look at the things in my home that I love, those are the things that translate into a quilting design for me. So I'm gonna share with you just a couple more quick little things. Um, one of the things that I told you at the very beginning that I loved, first and foremost, was my family. And so I had designed a quilt called Shanna's Cameo, and I no longer have the quilt, um, but I do have the central design 
um, for that. And it was basically a cameo picture. Um, this is supposed to represent my daughter. And I put her into a center medallion that was kind of like a mirror. And each of the different little hair tendrils was quilted a little bit differently. Um, it was just a really fun quilt to work on because it sang to my soul. And you know, when something sings to your soul and you're excited about it, you just can't wait to wake up and, and get that quilt done. In fact, you may have a hard time sometimes stopping um, because you're enjoying yourself so much. My children used to come into my quilting room and they'd say, what's for dinner tonight? And I'd look at my watch and say, oh my gosh, it's eight o'clock in the evening. And I would say, oh guys, you know what? It's yo-yo tonight. And they'd say, yo-yo, what is yo-yo? And I'd say, well, it's you're on your own. And you know what? By gosh, by golly, the next day it would happen again. And my kids got smart and they'd, say, they'd come downstairs and say, hey, mom, is it yo-yo again tonight? And I'm looking at my watch and at 7.30 this time, I'm like, oh my gosh, I did it again. But just to be smart, I said, no, tonight's FFY. And they're like, okay, what's FFY? Well, that is fin for yourself. <laughs> But that's what can happen to you when you get excited about doing a project. One of the things that I thought about doing um, was I wanted to do a phoenix. Our house burnt down a couple of years ago and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool to have a phoenix rising from the ashes and maybe call the quilt um, from tragedy to triumph. So I bought a vector image and I'm not sure how well y'all will be able to see this. But this was the original vector image that I bought. And what I did is I took that vector image and then I translated it into um, something, a line drawing with a variety of fills in it. And this would be my center medallion. I would tell you that I would probably also add tumbling blocks underneath the phoenix just because that would, you know, tumbling blocks, the foundation of the home, um, type of thing and then the phoenix is going to rise from the the wreckage you know of that foundation um, and this is a design concept that I'm actually um, in the middle of working on and I think it's going to be really cool when it's done and personally rewarding because it's something that's really near and dear to my heart you know I've been able to take something that I've gone through and translate it into a personal message or a quilt the, and it's very cathartic to be able to do that um, because it helps you to work your way through uh, things that have happened that, that maybe weren't so pleasant. It's kind of like what we're doing right now. You know, um, I, I can tell you that, you know, I told y'all that we've been doing social distancing because we live out in the country, but by gosh, by golly, the minute somebody tells me that I can't go do something, that is all I can think about. I am dying to be out in the public and give somebody a hug. And I don't know if y'all are feeling exactly the same way or not, um, but that's kind of where I'm at. The one caveat or the one thing that's been good about this is that I have had a little bit more time to spend in my studio thinking about the things that I actually want to accomplish, you know, and I'm able to devote a little bit more time to projects that perhaps I had put off um, because I was so busy living life and getting from point A to point B that I wasn't actually doing the things that I loved. And right now, um, because I am home, I am able to do a little bit more of the things that I love. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you is kind of how I took an idea um, from something that I loved, designed the center medallion, and came up with the whole quilt design. So remember when I first started, I told y'all that I loved hummingbirds and I loved flowers and that I was one of the first people to have the feeders out in the spring. So, and I showed you those vector images of the hummingbirds. Well, what I did is I didn't draw exactly what the vector image had, but I drew this version of a hummingbird. And I just fell in love with it because it, it just, you know, um, A, it's a hummingbird, and B, um, when I added the different fills to it, it totally sang to my soul. So what I did is I took this hummingbird and I came up with this center design. 
And what I did is mirror image the hummingbirds and I put some whimsical kind of flowers, again, asymmetrically placed within the frame and added some feathers because feathers is one of my absolute favorite quilting motifs. And once I came up with that center design, y'all will get this, I swear y'all will get this. When you come up with that center design, you are off and running. It's just like everything starts popping. It's like popcorn in a popper, right? Initially, it's just a kernel here and a kernel there and you go pop, pop, pop. But as it heats up, all of a sudden those kernels start just popping a little bit faster. So you go from pop, pop, pop to pop, 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 pop. And that's what happens. Your ideas just start bubbling to the surface and you come up with some great design concepts. So here, um, I hope you can see this because um, it is done in pencil. I have taken this center design and kind of just, um, you know, put in here that, you know, this is what I was going to do. And I started adding different rounds to it. So I added different borders to it and kind of came up with what I thought the whole entire quilt would look like, just the different rounds. And once I came up with that, then I was able to do kind of an exploded view of what I would do with the different types of fills, borrowing um, idea concepts from the center medallion. Um, you don't have to draw it up as intricately as I have done. It's just that I'm a very visual person and if I don't have everything drawn up, well, then I don't know how I'm gonna get from point A to point B, quite frankly. I am geographically challenged, whether it's on the road or on my machine. So what I have to do is I personally have to draw a road map up. So you saw an exploded view. This is just one quarter of the quilt and it's going to be mirror image. So I just have to rotate it and then each corner will look exactly the same going around that center medallion. And then what I do, is I also um, draw out some ideas of what I think the, that those feathers should be looking at. You know, am I gonna uh, put some different things in them? In my case, I love to put elements like flowers and leaves and curls into my feathers because again, it takes that expectation of perfection right off the table. It's like eye candy and it gives you something else to look at. If I'm putting the quilt into a show, um, the feathers don't have to be exactly perfect and exactly symmetrical because the way I've done them, you expect them um, to be a little bit different. And here again is another exploded view. So with all of that said, golly gee willikers, I feel like I've talked forever. Um, I hope sincerely that um, this presentation has given you a little bit of motivation on where you can get your design inspiration. Hopefully I've given you a few tips on where you can look to get that design inspiration. You know, I will be visiting um, the Gamel Quilting page all day long, so if you have any questions, I'd be sincerely um, happy to answer those. Um, you know, this is this has been kind of a difficult time for all of us. Um, golly, I just, you know, I, I just can't say that enough, but you know, one of the things that we're doing is we're sharing um, with each other to make the time a little bit easier. Um, I thank y'all so much for being a part of this, um, being a part of my journey, and I hope perhaps the information I shared with you could be a part of your journey. Don't forget to join us again at three o'clock this afternoon, that's Central Standard Time, for another presentation by a different person on Gamble's Facebook Live page. Again, just repeating that these presentations are being offered every day at 10.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. In the meantime, I'm going to sign off and just say stay safe, stay sane if you can. Don't have too many dates with your refrigerator. My jeans don't fit anymore. And um, enjoy the process. Thank you so much for indulging me. Talk to y'all later.